Hi children. This is our physical science facilitator, SS Commander Group of Schools. Welcome to the online classes. Children, in the last class we learnt what is acceleration in different cases. With respect to different cases, how we can identify the acceleration? What is the by acceleration? First of all, the rate of change of velocity. So where there is change in the velocity, where there is change in the velocity, suddenly there will be acceleration. Okay. So in first case, direction remains constant, velocity changes. Velocity is changing, so acceleration will be there. In second case, the magnitude of linear velocity remains constant, but the direction is continuously changing. So velocity also changes. In third case, both are changed. Okay, from that we define the acceleration, the rate of change of velocity. Now, today we are going to learn derivations. Okay, derivations and also some graphs. Okay, first we will go to the first equation of linear motion. First equation of linear motion. First equation of linear motion. What is the first equation of linear motion? Uh, v is equal to u plus a t. V is equal to u plus a t. Now we have to derive it. Okay, for the derivation, three parts will be there. First, data. Second, maybe the concept or maybe the previous formula and third one is about derivation. So let us see the data what we are having here. Let us consider an object here a point A and it's moving like this. At point A its initial velocity is U. Of course this motion may be extended either side of the A and B. But we are observing in these two cases. At point A, we are initially we are observing some initial velocity. At B, it may final velocity. So from here to here, to cover from here to here, it will take some time. Okay? And there is some change in the velocity, you know. Initial velocity is u, final velocity is v. So there is some change in velocity. Where there is change in velocity, suddenly our physical quantity will be arised. What do you call that? Acceleration. Acceleration. This is the data given. Based on the data, we have to go for different linear equations. These are the these are the variables we are having. Initial velocity, final velocity, time and acceleration is given. At the time, what is the formula? We have to use this one. So, we have to derive this one with the help of this data. Now, let us see that. First one, data. Initial velocity. Initial velocity. What is initial velocity? U. The same here is meter per second or something. The final velocity. What is the final velocity? V. Final velocity is V. Time taken. Time taken. What is the time taken? T seconds. And acceleration at time. Acceleration at time. That's about A. This is the data we are having. Okay. Next one is about Definition of acceleration. Next about acceleration definition. What is the definition of acceleration? Is uh, the, the rate of change of velocity. The rate of change of velocity. Okay, now we will go for that derivation. So from this, from the above definition, from the definition, what is the definition? Rate of change of velocity. 
रेट मीन्स एट पर्टिकुलर टाइम चेंज मीन्स डिफरेंस डेल्टा ओके सो एक्सेलरेशन इज डिफाइंड एज द रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ वेलास्ट राइट सो अकॉर्डिंग टू द डेफिनेशन अकॉर्डिंग टू दिसनेशन एक्सेलरेशन इज इक्वल टू रेट ऑफ एट पर्टिकुलर टाइम चेंज इन वेलासिटी चेंज इन velocity according to the definition okay so right here six definition okay <coughs> now acceleration formula is attained now now with the help of this we will see how we are going to derive that okay now a is equal to change means difference rate means time difference what is the difference in velocity v q difference in velocity okay ma difference in velocity by time now a is equal to v minus u cross multiplication by the cross multiplication what do you get a into t is equal to v minus u now write this equation v as the subject v as the subject so minus u will come this side u plus a t is equal to v otherwise v is equal to u plus k it is called as first equation of linear motion first equation of linear motion very easy one if you know the definition there is the value okay let us see the derivation First equation of linear motion is now v is equal to u plus a d. Don't forget, it is a linear motion. From this linear motion, we will derive vertical equilibrium, freely falling. Those are also linear motions. The complementary equations will also come with respect to this linear equations of motion. For this, to derive this, first we have to go for the data. Based on this, an object when we are observing initially, the velocity is u. Finally, the velocity is v. Means there is some change in velocity with respect to time. If there is some change in the velocity with respect to time, there must be acceleration. Now that is the data we are writing here, and the definition. Here we need the definition for any other linear equations of motion, any other formulae or basics or the previous knowledge you have to be used. Here also, what is the previous knowledge about the definition? Based on this definition, we change the acceleration. This a is equal to a minus u by t simply by the calculation. Get the t is a cross multiplication. We get a t is equal to u minus u, and v is equal to u plus a. Okay, children. Right. It's about the first equation of linear motion. Right. Let us see the second equation of linear motion. Have you understood? So in the first equation of linear motion. We can get the relation between a relation of v, u, a, t. In a given problem, in a given problem, we have to u, v, u, or t. We want to find a, so we use this formula. So v, u, a, t. If you want to find the relation of v, u, a, t, we have to use this formula. V is equal to u plus a t. Right, children? Now the second equation of linear motion. Let us see. Second equation of linear motion. The second equation of linear motion is S is equal to u t plus half a t square. This is about the second equation of linear motion. For this, let us see the conditions. For example, there is a point. A and it's moving like this up to here point B. The distance between these two points or the displacement between these two points is yes. When you observe at the point A, its initial velocity is u. Initial velocity is u, and there is some change in the velocity so that we can attain the acceleration. But to travel this distance from A to B, it is 
going to take some time of t. Time of t. This is the data given. Okay, so now here is not going to give the final velocity. Is going to say that there is an acceleration, is there is some change in the velocity. But when you are going to observe its initial velocity as u at the displacement is s, time is t and v. If the variables are these, mostly after seeing the problems, few children, not most of the few children are not at all going to attempt the question answer because lack of identification of the data. So first thing, when you see the problem, because actually full marks can be easily awarded for the problems. When you go for the higher exam, when you come to examination, approximately 40% are going to be the numericals. So you have to focus on the numericals. Very easy. Once you learn that, uh, read the problem, then you can easily identify the data. If you know the data, you can easily identify what is the formula we have to substitute. Okay? Right. So it is the data here. If initial velocity, displacement, acceleration, type are the variables, then we have to use this formula. S is equal to ut plus half at square. Okay? Right. For this, first what we need? Yes, correct. Data only. Data only. So what is the data here? Yes, say the data. The help of that. Ah, what is the first one? Initial velocity. Initial velocity. What is initial velocity? U. At time taken. What is time taken? P. At acceleration. What is the acceleration given? In then displacement. Displacement. Of course, a distance given in space. Yes, it is the data we are having. For this, we are having a fundamental formula. Let us see that formula, what we are having. Formula. To derive this, we need a formula. Yes. Let us see. In the previous classes, I explained you about what is the speed. What is speed pump? Distance by time. Then what is distance? Speed into time. So if you want to get the distance, speed into time. If I want to get the displacement, instead of speed, you write velocity into time. The dash by here. Let us see once again. What is velocity? Displacement by time. Now what is displacement? Velocity into time. If the body is not in uniform motion or not in uniform velocity, then what is the problem? For example, initially the body starts with u. After some time, its velocity is v. Then how you have to substitute this one? For that, the displacement is equal to average velocity we will take. Already I told you, we define as or we differentiate as speed and velocity, but mostly hard to consider average speed, average velocity. Here also, average velocity into what is that? Time. Into time. What is it by average now? Yes, sum of the physical quantities by number of the physical quantities. For example, what is the average of uh, uh, 8 and 11? What is that? 8 plus 11 by 2. Nothing but added by 2 makes 9 by 5. Like this, we have to write the average. Now, here also, what is the formula we are having for the displacement? Average velocity to time. I understood why I am going to take this one. Yes, remember this. Such kind of average speeds, those things will be repeated again. So, what is the formula here? Ah, displacement is equal to displacement is equal to average 
velocity average velocity into ten into ten. Now half of the derivation has completed. Okay. Yes, right. See displacement. Okay, we will see that one. Derivation of in this derivation, so how to use this formula? What is displacement? Yes, is equal to average velocity. Average means sum of the physical quantities by number of the physical quantities. How many physical quantities here? Two. So number of is two. V u plus v by into time. Okay. Now s is equal to u plus v by 2 into t. But what is the first equation of linear motion? V is equal to u plus a b. But, but we know that. But we know that. What we know? V is equal to u plus a b. Then it will be the first one and maybe the second one. Now substitute this into here. In the V place, we have to substitute U plus A. Because we know that V is equal to U plus A. You know? Substitute here. Then what happens? S is equal to U will be as usual plus. Instead of V, instead of V, what happened? U plus A T whole divided by 2 into t. Now simplification s is equal to u plus u 2 u plus kt by 2 into t. Now so apply this denominator in usual. s one is equal to apply the denominator in usual at multiple. Of course, if you multiply, also no problem. But you have to follow the bar first, the first bracket you have to close. Now, 2u by 2 plus at by 2 into 2 to get cancelled. Now, s is equal to multiply with u into t, ut plus at into t, t square by 2. This can be written as s is equal to ut plus this can be written as half now half at square. It is the second equation of linear motion. Clear ma? We will see once again. So a body start with initial velocity u and attain an acceleration of a after 3 seconds and it covers a displacement of s. Okay, so the data is initial velocity is u and time taken t, acceleration a, displacement is s. That is the data. For that, what is the formula we are having? Displacement is equal to average velocity to time. Why am I writing that one? Because velocity is equal to displacement by time. Now, displacement is equal to velocity into time. But here the velocity is not unique, not uniform. So that we have to take average velocity. So I am going to take average velocity. Average velocity u plus v by t. Average is nothing but sum of the quantities by sorry, by number of quantities. Now, when you use this one, u plus u by t, and here simply have to substitute instead of v, u plus a t. Why? Because we know the first equation of linear motion, v is equal to u plus a t. Because in that derivation there is no v. So v has to be substituted by whatever the other. Physical quantities we are having. We are having u a t. We are having u a t, but no v. So the v is going to be replaced in this one. You may not know why are we using this one because in that given data there is no v. For that you have to go for whatever the physical quantities we are having. What are the physical quantities we are having? U, u a t. So we are substituting those values here. So there may be simplification. When you multiply this, we will get. Okay? Now let's switch it up. Right. Now we'll see. 
I'm very impressed now with your motion. Is it clear? Okay. And third, fourth, equations of linear motions are also there. Okay. The fourth equation of linear motion is a set term, that's the second one. And before going to that, we should learn something about uh, graphs. Okay, so now we will see some graphs. If time supports, we will go for the derivations again. Otherwise, we will go for the other graphs. Right. Now, we will see some graphs. How we have to study the graphs and what is the information is there the graph and both how we can extract the information. Right. Let us see two graphs. X axis, Y axis. Some children are going to ask, sir, at the bottom we have to write the sir, why you are writing it? It's actually horizontal, X axis for the horizontal, Y axis for the vertical. We can represent like that also. Right. Now, commonly, an X axis we are going to take the time in seconds in this way. A Y axis, if I am going to take the uh, displacement, displacement, yes, well, of course, if I will take in meters, maybe in meters, it's about the horizon, and the value is 1 second, 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 4 seconds, 5 seconds, like this. Here, 1 meter, 2 meter, 3 meter, 4 meter, 5 meter. Now, the graph is like this. Comment on the motion of the arm, like this. It's a graph. And we take one more graph like this. Now, this I will take time in seconds in this direction. And here I am going to take the velocity. Velocity meters per second. Of course, horizon. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like this. And again like this. Comment on the motion of the object. <coughs> Both are same. Parallel to the x-axis. Here also parallel to the x-axis. But what happened with this one? Change the nature of this one. It's about the object is under rest. The object is under rest. Why? At first second, the distance is 3 meters. For the second, 3 meters. For the third, 3 meters. For the fourth, 3 meters. Means there is no change in the displacement. In first second, you observe the gap is only 3 meters. Second second, 3 meters. Third second, 3 meters. Means there is no change in the position. Means there is no motion. Okay, what is my motion? If there is some change in the position of an object continuously with respect of time and one more thing is there, not only the time, reference. Okay, so here rest. How can you say the body is under rest? Because with respect to time, there is no change in the position. So you can say the body is under rest. What about this? At one second, maybe two and a half meter per second. For second second, two and a half meter per second velocity. Third, two and a half meter per second velocity. So each and every second the velocity remains constant. Means the body is moving with same velocity. So that we can say it is uniform velocity. Uniform velocity. Okay, don't get confused. When you have to identify the nature of the uh, motion, first we should so we have to observe what are the physical quantities given on x axis and y axis. Here on x axis, displacement is given. Here, sorry, on y axis. On y axis. On y axis, here, displacement is given, whereas here, velocity is given. Okay, so with respect to time, there is no change in the velocity. There is no change in the velocity. So that the object is moving 
to the same velocity. The same velocity. How long the time intervals are very small? Okay, so what is uniform velocity? The distance or the displacement covered by your body, the displacement covered by your body should be equal. How long the time intervals are very small? The body is also covering the same velocity, same velocity. Okay, first second the same, second second, third second, so there is no change in the velocity. So we can pass it as uniform velocity. Now we will see two more graphs. Don't forget if you want to say the nature of the motion, first we should observe what are the physical quantities that are given on x axis and y axis. Right. We will take one more here. See like this. X axis and y axis. And of course, first. So here, time in seconds in this direction. Here, displacement, of course, it meters in this upward direction. Maybe first second, second second, third, fourth, six second. First one meter, two meter, three meter, four meter, five meter like this. Similarly, on one graph, the same rotation, x-axis and y-axis. And x axis, I am going to take time in seconds left to right about this hours. And here, I am going to take the velocity, velocity meters per second in upward direction. See, here 1 second, 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 4 seconds. 1 meter per second, 2 meter per second. 3 meter per second, 4 meter per second like this. And the graph is like this. The graph is like this. Here also like this. Same type of graphs. Now comment on the nature of the motion. Here it is about displacement versus time. Displacement versus time. Means displacement by time. Displacement by time means Velocity time. It is velocity. What type of velocity you have understood? 1 meter, sorry, go for 1 second, 1 meter. 2 meters, so 2 seconds, 2 meters. 3 seconds, 3 meters. 4 seconds, 4 meters. So, like this, what is happening here? Equally. So, it is being covered with equal, in equal intervals of time. So, the velocity is gradually increasing. So, it is about uniform velocity. Uniform velocity. Now, this graph is about velocity versus time. Velocity versus time. Velocity by time. For 1 second, 1 meter per second, 2 meters, sorry, 2 seconds, 2 meter per second. For 3 seconds, 3 meter per second. For 4, 4 meters per second. So, for each and every second, the increase, the rate, of the velocity is increasing the same rate for 1 1 meter per second, 1 meter per second, 1 meter per second, 1 meter per second. So, like that gradually increases. So, that it is known as uniform acceleration. Uniform acceleration. Clear? So, like this, we can identify the nature of the motion with respect to different physical quantities. Now, I will give a small homework with respect to this. Graphs. We have to solve it. Okay? No doubt. What are the graphs? X axis, Y axis. Origin. Similarly, like this. X axis, Y axis, origin. Okay? So it is about graph A and graph B. So, we have to write the, its natures. Post here, time in second, here, displacement, here, meters, here also displacement, here also displacement, in meters, here, time in second, like this. 
Okay. Now, one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. One meter, two meter, three meter, four meter. Similarly, so one second, two second, three seconds, four seconds. One meter, two meter, three meter, four meter. And the graph is like this. And here, the graph is like this. Okay, this is the power point. We have to say the equation. Understood? Two graphs again. By the next class, I'll explain you about uh, the solutions. Clear, ma? So this is how work for you. Okay, try to solve this one. So, so that today, what we got? Two derivations. First equation of linear motion, second equation of linear motion, and how we have to identify the nature of the motion with respect to graphs. Graphs. Okay. And uh, the coming class, we'll go for the remaining two derivations and numericals also. Okay. Good day.